guys to another awesome dev vlog you could call it that i'm your host bliskin x and today i wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update with regards to my pixel moba and what i've been up to in the last couple of you guys had the last week i've been a little afk you probably noticed work has been hectic i only get a bit of spare time the weekends to to throw some code down and to be very frank i had to go you know one step forward four steps back in my last video till now so made some great improvements with the overall networking side of things because that's the critical thing about this game it's purely network based and eventually as you saw if those of you haven't seen it go and watch the previous video i went in and i demonstrated first a peer-to-peer -peer, i then moved that across to a server-based side headless kado version which i installed on a wamp version using my windows you can download wamp it's pretty i'll put a link down below now I went ahead and used that to host the game theoretically. So the lobbies are held on server. What I then did was I noticed that, okay, sending the positions of all the players was critical because it dawned on me, like, how am I gonna manage cheating? How am I gonna manage certain inputs, you know, that, that I've gotta validate on the server to know that that is in fact true. So it might sound complex, but I'm gonna do a, a pretty in-depth video with regards to this because I think in networking in general, especially with game development, that is critical. Peer-to-peer -peer is great, small scale. But let me tell you, when you're dealing with games such as Dota 2, League of Legends, you need validation to know that, okay, spawn points, true. Positions, true. Sinking of bullets, um, ensuring the turrets, you know, all that windfall, theoretically, has to take place to the side. And that is where my problem came in. I wrote a lot of client-based code and I didn't take into consideration what server will be handling after I'd done that installation, opposed to what's client's handling. Let me give you some examples. So yeah, you've got your current HUDs, perfect for client side, why? Other players don't need to see your HUDs. So having your HUDs with certain elements attached to it makes logical sense, such as your health, things that apply to you, you know, that you see here, yeah, this logic of the HUD, I'm not referring to the health overall as a player, is good client side, because you only, you know you that's validating it, it's only true to you. So, but sending player health, etc., who killed the player and so forth, that is something that you would send server side and that validates and sends it out to the puppets or to the other, you know, clients uh, that are attached to the server that are connected via the server. So that was pretty cool. Managed to get my infrastructure, you could say, sorted. So I managed to sync bullets now. I've done a lot of things. So if you see here, if I come across with this little player three over here, you'll notice that he's got as you can see, I'm clicking on the mouse on this specific screen, means that I'm the player. I've just added a, a non-modulate color to this so that you can see that the rest of the guys on the other screen, so let's say take player two for argument's sake, he is in control of him and he's obviously not modulated like us. But these are gonna be character selected. These are gonna be skins. We're gonna bring in that. That's the fun part. That's the part I think is gonna be the easiest for me because I take care of most of the values as server side. In other words, the attack range and the distance of each player and a melee attack, a range attack, I'm keeping that server side. So the minute you start the game, you go and fetch all the variables related to this specific hero. So that I've done, taken care of. Okay, so yeah, you can see um, other player there as well. And then obviously there he's moving as I, as I did. So very smooth, there's no problems as you can see. Very, very smooth, which is fantastic. Right, so obviously I'm going to do a demonstration with latency wise and what that would look like with packet loss to see how the game holds. So there are certain things client-based that I will need to take care of. So as I come closer within a turret range, this is a friendly turret, obviously I can shoot within the range. You can see there's the bullets all synced, uh, which is pretty, pretty cool, pretty standard. Okay, if I obviously take a hit, let's assume that this is the player here, player two. Yeah, you can see his HUD. I'm just gonna come up over here. Obviously I've just disabled friendly fire for now. These are all on the same team, these guys. Um, I'm just gonna enable a friendly fire just to show you what that looks like. So if I go ahead here and I shoot him, his HUD will subtract. So coming in this range over here, and if I go ahead and shoot, there you can see now it's 450 that he took damage. And again, if I shoot him, there you'll see uh, it should have dropped. Okay, maybe it didn't work as intended. Right, so a little bit of work, a little bit of things that I need to obviously still sort out, but um, we'll get there. So yeah, you can see player three, I'm gonna just move up player two with him to show you what that looks like. They're sharing a shadow instance, which is critical as, as a team, you know, you wanna make sure that the allies do have um, do have the ability to scout the fog uh, correctly because they're on the same team as you start placing wards and, and, and so forth. So we'll go up to a bad turret here. So I'm gonna bring this guy up a little closer to show you what that looks like. Um, here comes a bad turret. Uh, he has the good guy, 
And if he comes in, you'll see that the bullets between these two screens now are going to be synced as well. So there you can see he shoots him and I'm starting to take damage. I'm down to 350. So you'll see him down to, to, to obviously that one didn't hit me and he's starting to drop. So there you can see if I destroy the turret, if I come close to this turret, just to give you an example, and I start shooting, you can see the damage taking place on both. And if I destroy it, it should be synced as well. So I'm going to keep shooting this. Obviously, you see my attack range is bigger, so I can only shoot once I'm within the range. There you can see, immediate, details the server, listen, player 3 destroyed it, um, go ahead, update the puppets and tell it that it's gone. So there we go, now it's gone, I'll move on to the next point, obviously, just to show you this as well. Uh, moving up with the spawn points, also again, very critical, so I'll come in here just to make sure I can see him. Um, and then I'm going to just park off here, come up with this player, and one. One of these, two more shots, there we go, and last one, and dead. All right, so there it is, and what's gonna happen is I'm going to spawn. There it is, timer up, now I'm spawning again, and off I go to the attack, you could say, theoretically. So this guy's still hanging around there, I'm on back on my way here with player three that just died. I'm gonna move across quickly. So you can see, still a lot of room for improvement, there's a lot behind the scene, and here we are, I'm back again to this little guy of which this turret killed me earlier. So, a little bit of improvement is done. I'm gonna clean this up. I got the bulk of it only working yesterday. I managed to just get a lunch break, managed to throw some code down, and I got that all sorted. So now I'm gonna reactivate the timers, the maps, etc., and then start really laying out the, the minor process. Okay, that's a bit of a glitch over there. Player two is obviously last position. So like I said, you can see, still a hell of a lot of room of improvement that needs to take place. Um, I feel like I'm making strides with it, uh, but I thought, let me just do an update video. It wasn't as prepped as my, my previous ones, but I wanted to show you guys what I've been up to, obviously, and um, slowly I've got to also do the Z indexes on the labels. So you can imagine, the scale of these type of games, you can really give credit to these guys that and teams that created, you know, one guy that's that's trying to do as much as possible. I think I'm gonna probably have two or three or four euros to start off with, with uh, with full abilities as well as um, some item stuff, you know, simple things such as an ax to drop a tree down, uh, maybe, you know, just look for some cool um, a rolling attack and, and a few other bits that's away from the base attack. Um, is something that I would probably be focusing on next as well as just dropping in the other fundamentals. And then I'm gonna begin the creep waves, which I've already taken care of. I've got most of that code in terms of pathfinding done. And then I will sync that with all the players. And then after that, start smashing out the glitches and adding the tiny effects, really. And then see what happens. Put it on a server, invite a few beaters. So I get asked a lot of questions, how far out am I? I personally think that I'm quite a couple of months out of really getting something that's gonna be fun. Uh, like I said, this is just a really fan-based inspired game, you know, just to not only enhance my skills, but to just enjoy it with, with friends and so forth. More than likely, probably just open source it um, and share it with the community and you guys can see what it is I've done behind the scenes. I, I don't see myself uh, really going to a Steam platform with it as of yet, but I really do want to make it, if I spend enough time, I would like to get it to a point where it really is actually fun and enjoyable to play, if that makes sense. So I am going to strive for that. I'm not going to do this as a half-hearted project and not see it through. I'm really committed in seeing this through. I'm going to keep you guys updated as a, as a form of holding me accountable for it. And I'm going to carry on, obviously, with our tutorials as per normal. I'm going to start picking that up now that we're slowing down a little bit. So guys, as always, just thought I'd share that with you. I hope you guys are being safe out there. And always remember, it's a jungle.